Hey everybody, uh, Pax here. So last week we got several complaints because uh, Mr. Henry Rosenberg went off a little intensely about really well-loved shonen anime Demon Slayer. Now this is something that is clearly a huge landmark in anime, something that a lot of young anime fans are super, super duper into, and we don't want to offend anybody. And so I talked with Henry, we realized we were a little too harsh on this, and so we agreed uh, with his permission that we would start this episode off today with an apology that he wrote. So, uh, Henry, if if you're ready, uh, he's he's prepared something whenever you're ready. Hello, Rotakus, Dojinshis, and Gentlemen. This is Henry. I'd like to speak directly to you for a minute. Uh, on my last episode, I made some controversial statements about the quality of the manga and anime franchise Demon Slayer. I would like to take this opportunity to issue an apology. I am deeply sorry for being so right. I know it can be painful to hear the dark truth told so plainly, and I'm sorry that I had to be the one to do it to you. As for my particular statements, I said what I said, it was all true, and if you don't like it, then you are dumb. Puff my shorts, good night and good luck, the universe is illusion, God is dead, buy gold, and goodbye. Hello everybody, I'm Pax and this is Brotakus, the show where we talk about what anime is and isn't worth watching. We believe you don't need a major in anime studies to enjoy this wild, beautiful, strange art form and we are so lucky to have you on this journey with us. Our guest today is a master's student in interdisciplinary studies focusing on psychology and linguistics and is also the host of the 3AM Thoughts podcast, that is Thoughts, T-H-O-T-S, an expert on the Chris course, a master of hot takes and fire posts. You can find her on Twitter. Twitter and Instagram at Obey1K Nobi. We will leave the spelling of that in the show notes. Welcome K to the podcast. How you doing today, K? That's probably like the sweetest thing and most hilarious thing anyone has ever said and or introduced me by. Hi, I'm K. So much love for you, Pax. Oh my goodness. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I have known Kay for a long ass time, and Kay has expanded my mind in the realms of how much it is possible to, t to know about Chris Evans. And, uh... <laughs> 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 It wasn't purposeful. It didn't start out purposeful. It's very accidental. I know it shows you. Oh you didn't God. show us it. We understand it was part of the. It was the bloodline technique unleashed. Laden Chris to Evans comes for us all. Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're also joined today two guests who are now so integral to Brotaku's that they no longer get full introductions. It is Henry and Anna on the pod. Henry, Anna, oh. how are we doing today? Living the dream. Very excellent. Thank you for asking, Pax. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. We will include all their information in the description. But as part of the Brotaku's family, they're just on today because they're on. We're all on. We are all on, on today because we are finally discussing the long-awaited, much-debated, uh, often-hated series Never imitated. Demon Slayer. Yeah, I never imitated, although there's a lot of imitation going on. Okay, Demon Slayer. So this is a pretty extreme thing. Uh, I wanted to real quick, though, just check in. Everybody doing okay? Did we see anything dope this week? Anything we got to throw out there? I know season four of Castlevania's out. Anybody peep that? Mm -hmm. Yep, I got screeners oh, yeah. for it. With the, and I got to watch it last week, and it was awesome. Oh, <laughs> man. It's pretty good, right? It's pretty fucking good. My 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 favorite himbo. He's he's rocking his shit. I love it. <laughs> so good, so good. Did anybody see season eight of Game of Thrones? Yes. So there was that scene where like the actor who the actors who play like Daenerys and Jon Snow are like just trying to save that ultimate scene where the death happens by acting mm -hmm. so hard at each other to the point where you could feel the force of their acting. Like and just really that, leaving it on on all the cutting room floor. Yeah, and yet they're really good at it. So I could feel like it was almost like a shonen style energy blast of them acting at each other to save the script. I felt like this. I felt like Warren Ellis's writing was doing that in Castlevania. This season, <laughs> it's, it's clear that like a fifth season definitely could have been on the books, but like it, he was just oh, it was so good. He just wrote the shit out of it. He just I burned it. through it. Yes. Um. Mm -hmm. And similarly, anyone see Yasuke? I know Yasuke Not finally dropped. Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Huge, huge disappointment for me, but I will leave that for a future episode. It is very... I hear the mechs uh, are weird. 
I thought it was going to be about Yasuke. It's not. It's uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's insane. And honestly, we're going to talk about Demon Slayer today. We're going to talk about maybe some uh, areas of improvement for the writing. Uh, Yasuke is basically like, it's like the anime version of Suicide Squad. And in that, it just like goes through the laundry list of what not to do when writing a thing. And so mm. in comparison... Mugen Train is the shit and we love it. So if that's yeah. all you're looking for is our review of Mugen Train is dope, log off now. Pause the podcast, leave that <laughs> hey, five-star you review. you the end of your podcast, <laughs> this is all you needed to hear. If you wanted to hear the Mugen Train was dope, we just said it. So exactly. there you go. Exactly. So so keep that in your heart. And for, for the real heads who, who, who want to hear the deep dive, we will get into that right about now. So I actually think the best way to start to engage with Demon Slayer is to talk about its massive, massive popularity. Um, so, Kay, can you kind of give us a sense? You spent time in Japan recently and, and kind of came to some conclusions there? It's big. It's bigger than I expected because it wasn't until after I got back to the States that I even, like, kind of, sort of started to get in it. And that was just because a friend had to drag me along like basically pull me by my teeth mm -hmm. and be like hey spend some spend some time with me spend some quality time and let's let's watch the show together and like have a good time and we'll be like us bonding and also enjoying a really great anime and whatever and i thought going into it the only thing i knew about it was like oh my gosh this is this animation this like style beautiful like yeah. mwah, chef kiss type of stuff and all over Japan, you know, at, at least in Tokyo where I was, um, loads of things, uh, loads of merchandise, loads of advertisements as well. It's also the first manga series that has ever outsold One Piece. <sighs> yeah. Like, in yeah. a year, not not total, but still, that was like a king-slaying moment. It is, and I'm so glad you brought that up, Henry, because Demon Slayer, I think, might now be the most the most popular anime of all time at least in terms of its mm -hmm. height of popularity in one moment like yeah. i think i think yeah, obviously like, you could be like well naruto uh one piece dragon ball z they have all this staying power all this relevancy but i think that all of those have been very popular and have sustained that but i think demon slayer is at like a fucking mountain and nothing else is like approached yet mm -hmm. um just to kind of drive that point home there was a study that was done in a, a japanese middle school where they um asked all uh like seven thousand kids or something what they thought the most inspirational person in the world was number two was their mothers number three was their fathers number four was their teachers and number one was Tanjiro oh <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, I mean at least he's a good role model to have I was about to out say of, I mean like out of all soft of boy <laughs> yeah out of all of the characters and all of the people you could ever come in contact with I mean yeah he's not bad <laughs> He's like got super powered niceness. He's just the, the nicest person. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing the wrong with being a nice person. Boy. <laughs> the sweetest, smelliest boy. So Demon Slayer is um interestingly enough, over now. It is the first, I think, manga to have gotten this popular, anime to have gotten this popular that has gone out at its peak. It is the it is the juice world of anime, so to say. It, <laughs> sure. Whereas whereas Goblin Slayer is the tri is the uh, triple X tentacion of anime. It is uh -huh. the. Uh, we're gonna keep going. Yeah, I don't we're want stretching more some that. metaphors, but we're, we're getting there. But but if you know, you know. So um anyway, Demon Slayer is is written by uh, mangaka Koyoharo uh, Gotuge. Is that how I pronounce that, Anna? Yes. Sick. Sounds right to me. Uh, and it has had a five-year run, has um, not yet taken number one in Shonen Jump every week. One Piece still has that. You can't take this from my old arthritic hands. I'll grab <laughs> onto that forever. Uh, but let's talk briefly about, because for this episode, we're going to finally do our kind of like wide-ranging what is Demon Slayer, but the big thing of this is going to be a review of the movie Mugen Train, which is dis disgustingly popular it it is the first anime movie i think ever to be number one among all movies in the u.s for three mm -hmm. weeks now yep. it outsold spirited away knocked spirited away off of its throne yep. and it has just titanic influence but so if we had to say um what demon slayer is about uh who, who wants to take that like what is the 
the the broadest what the fuck am I looking at here, Anna? I got it. All right. So in the broadest sense, Tanjiro, our hero, uh, comes home and discovers that his family has been slayed by demons, and he goes into a, a, a wild depression about it, only to find his sister wandering the snow still alive. Gets excited, find out she has become a demon through this demon attack. And it starts him on his journey to sort of become a demon slayer and fix Nezuko's condition. For sure. Sweet, and short, simple. Mm -hmm. And really compelling. It's really compelling. And beyond that, though, there's plenty of anime with really compelling initial bites. Why the hell is this as popular as it is? Because this is Titanic. Fucking search me, dude. I have no idea. <laughs> Do it. I'm I'm sorry to also say I have no fucking clue either. Okay. I am part of me, the person like, on like, the board who likes David Slayer. Okay. Like, like I like it. And I feel like I can see why a lot of other people like it because I you know, I've been into anime for like a, a really, really long time. And so I can see how there's influences or like it it's definitely its own thing. But, like, I can see where other people who've liked other shonen previously could, like, really attach on to some of this. Like, and at the totally, same time, I have no fucking clue. I can totally see why it is popular. I cannot conceive of why it is the most popular anime franchise ever. It, like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't add up to me because I, I watch this show and I'm like, yes, this is your average shonen story. All right. But... So you always said this is baby's first shonen, and there is really something to be said for accessibility. The storyline mm. is compelling. It is Cause, easy cause to get I'm into. Baby. It's it, true. It, it's easy to get into. It's beautiful to look at, as well as the fact that the music fucking slaps. There's nothing to. While some people may feel that there is nothing particularly outstanding about it, there's nothing that really doesn't work as a whole. And I think that it's that wholeness. All right, Henry, we see. It's that wholeness <laughs> um, that of accessibility that makes this so simple to get into. It's really pretty to watch, and it's just, it's a fun time. In my opinion, what is there to not like? I mean, I can vibe with that. And the, also World the building. fact that it is not, like, going on for eternity. Mm -hmm. that, it's o that it's over. There is a deadline. Like, there is an end in sight. There is light at the end of the tunnel. To, to oh. and done. Easy. I hadn't mm -hmm. considered that, but like in this era where people are like front loading new hit songs with the hooks right at the front, two minutes, like uh, start and finished, like maybe this is, maybe that is, there, there is something to say yeah. about the fact that this is like the Cliff Notes uh, version of a shonen anime. Is the this like gateway very... drug shonen? Yeah. Totally. 100%. It might be. 100%. I think it's going to do wonders for the popularity, popularity of manga and anime in total. And like, Hey, shout out to the mangaka. He had a very specific story that he wanted to tell. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. He got in, he got out, he told the whole story. It was done. Which is what confuses me about how little seems to happen. Yes. Yeah. So everything we're going to say here, if for some reason you did not listen to the earlier command of stop listening, yeah. um, <laughs> in your heart, before you write that comment, uh, you know what? Actually, if you hate it, if you hate us, you hate what you're about to hear. Write the fucking comment. Give us the engagement. Give us the engagement. You just hate me because you hate me. Something to me. <laughs> I but. did. I did hear from someone who is uh, way more into this than I am that what happened with the mangaka is uh, they ended up having like some family issues that they knew would take them out of the game for a very long time and would mm. therefore put kind of the stuff on hiatus so what happened with the ending is that mm -hmm. to a lot of longtime fans it felt a little rushed and while there were other things outside of their control that you know yeah. they did the best that they could given the circumstances and you know what i really applaud them for that because they finished it instead of like leaving it to on be hiatus, for yeah. however long and who knows if they would ever like maybe they would pull a george R. R. martin and never get just get back to it yeah mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And with that, uh, yeah. with that, let's get kind of real with Demon Slayer about what's going on here because thing everyone always mentions. So let's let's we'll just like popcorn this around and talk about main attributes of Demon Slayer, things like that. Um, I think the combat is probably the main thing that people point to and they go like, oh my god, that's the best combat in anime, period. It's really pretty. 
Anna, who does the combat? Uh, or what? what is the, the studio? The studio the, the is Ufotable. Uh, they are very popular. I'm oh, sorry for stealing it from you. But um, <laughs> they, like do a lot, thing, they like, pioneered a You're lot of... You're the cynic. Anna's the knowing things person. Okay. I shut Anna's up the now. You said it. You said it. <laughs> it's Ufoto. <euphoric. laughs> so, so how would we describe the animation in this? Because the characters are really, they're all, is is chibi, like, too diminishing to call them chibi? Like I don't think it necessarily goes into chibi realm. It's, they've, they've still got all their fingers. They're still fully, like, I would say they have a very youthful appearance about them. I wouldn't necessarily mm. put it in chibi because they're still fully formed humans. Yeah, they, they have all their yeah. attributes. They have uh, these like beautiful, wonderfully big, bigly drawn eyes. They and, and their fluidity of uh, movement is a little higher leveled than Chibi would usually be. Mm-hmm. They're just That's very young. Fair. They're yeah. young characters, and they get drawn as young looking people, but they're not like deformed. Although it does say that the death rate among, like, a demon slayers, usually they die before they're 30, so I suppose that does make kind of, like, some sort of narrative mm. sense. And also, gotcha. like, just in general, the dis- the designs are so distinguishable from oh, all they're yeah. shown in, and it's, wow, it's really something to say, considering how much work gets put out into the world, that you mm. can, like, even people who might not even be into the show can point to To have like, such distinct that's- style. Yeah, that that that's a thing right there that I've seen on the internet before. Mm. You know? There are so <laughs> many characters that are immediately iconic in the in the show, from like Tanjiro's specific colors to Nezuko's pink. She, I think she might be one of the only characters in the main cast who has pink. She pops. Everybody has a very distinctive silhouette and color scheme. And yeah, the two toned very- hair. Yep. Mm-hmm. Everyone yeah. has two toned hair. It's not just that <laughs> one character. Yeah, that's true. And they, I, I can see why the uh, fan community has grown so much around different adaptations of them and cosplaying them and gender swapping them and just all of the really cool art that you see. And the combat in Demon Slayer is really amazing. The the whole point is that all demons are descended from like one dude, right? Like, um, uh, uh Mister Mugen. Yeah, what's the what's the what's his name? Like Mugen. Gay Craig, the guy who's like the head of the demons. Muzan. 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 Is that is that it? The yeah. one that kind of looks like, like s- Michael Jackson. M- Muzan Mugen. <laughs> yep. Okay. Oh god, that white so, hat is ridiculous. So Michael Jackson leads all the demons, <laughs> and there and it's like all descend from him, and he's filled with tumors and tentacles and testicles and all other sorts of horrors inside of him, um, but. His 12 commanders, I'm a fucking slut for, like, the 19 Moon Chieftain and the 18 Venus Warriors and the 5 Supreme Celestial Superpowers. Mm-hmm. I love titles and names. I don't know that I do love that it's so we clear. We haven't really gotten to see the upper level ones yet. We've only seen the shitty ones. We'll get to, we'll get to. It's like they, we'll they get talk to. about all these ranks and all these levels. There's no, like, consistent rules to it. What are, like... There's How that. do demons get their powers? What shapes it? What is all this? They're is- a gang, baby. The rules are just the streets. Uh, <laughs> I want specific rules. I mean, oh, like, God. you're not wrong. I feel like it's the same way, though, with the pillars and, like, the demon yeah. corpse as well. I was mm-hmm. asking my friend, I was like, so how do they do? Because it's not like bleach where they have, like, the soul society and there's very strict, like, here's your hierarchy, here's your captain, here's your lieutenant. There's, like, these vague pillars that are a thing for some reason, and then some guys mm-hmm. is, I, I is what honest, I got out of it. It, it, it does lack like, a little bit of world building, as Henry yeah, said. Some, yeah, of, like, some of the world is a little not fleshed out. And so the Demon Slayer Society has, like, the 12 dudes, the Hashiras, and they're not all dudes, there's some dudettes in there, um, but uh, there's, like, the 12 Hashiras, and then, like, uh, kind of everybody else is down there, and they have sort of pseudo titles, then there's Dad- Daddy Michael Jackson Demon, and his, like, 10 people, and they all have their number tattooed on their fucking eye, which is the most, like, I'm, I'm sure it's cool, but it just, for me, it's a little on the nose, and all of the combat in this, my main thing with this is that the combat looks gorgeous but when i was initially watching demon slayer i kept getting hit with the the this thing of like god this looks so cool why don't i find myself just like hungering to watch the next episode why don't i find myself like i must finish this 
And I think the reasons if you're just getting into it are a little complicated because combat and Demon Slayer is almost completely devoid of strategy. Yeah. The whole like, point of it is you're the demon slayer. You must cut off the head of the other demon or of the demon to kill them. And it's all done through breathing techniques. But the amount of strategy incorporated with this, it's usually like Tanjiro will be like, oh, my God, I'm fighting a demon who's behind me now. But, but that's impossible. My sword's pointing in front of me. What the fuck can I do? Wait a second. My father. Oh. Remember, Tanjiro, <laughs> do water breathing technique 11. And he'll be like, <gasps> water breathing technique 11. Cutting in a circle this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every, every time Tanjiro gets in a fight, I'm like, well, why did he win this? The answer is he's the protagonist. Not because he had hey. some special technique or he advanced in any way. He just, he tried harder and then he won. Yeah. Exactly, like Anna, you got something here. <laughs> you got, you got any he combat? does have techniques. He's got 11 <laughs> fucking techniques. He says, this is my technique. And and what does that mean? Like, oh, oh, but I feel like, I feel like the problem is that like, yes, they like all, because all of them with all the different breaths, like they have like a very wide range of like sword fighting techniques and like the di- different breaths that they're using. But like, we don't get to see how that applies to no. the thing. Like, it's not like Yu-Gi-Oh where like, here's my, dark magician card and like it does this and fuck your guy and, and boom rules. you lose your life points like we don't also, get that type of explanation so I feel like that's where it might be lacking I also will admit as the as the pro demon slayer person on this panel the part where he just cuts a fucking rock in half and he like learns like now I'm a full demon slayer oh man <laughs> why can I go in depth in that sequence I have <laughs> yeah, it, a it, strong it. opinion about it I think it. one of my biggest problems with demon slayer is that it starts with a completely broken time scale like, he mm. goes through this enormous training arc, and it apparently it takes him an entire year to do all of this, but it all happens in one chapter of manga or one episode of anime, so it doesn't feel like any time has passed. It's just like, he started working, and then he worked harder, and then he did it. There's no, there's no arc! Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Kay, did you have something here? Yeah, and I, I feel like that's also been, like, really integral to a lot of shonen, specifically, is, like, the training mm. arc. You have yeah. so much training and like you see the work that they've put in and then you get to your bad or like one of the lesser bads and you're like kind of okay. The thing that I wanted to say that totally unrelated to that was that they really missed out on like when he had his cute long hair. Oh, why the girl. fuck did they chop it off? Okay, he looked so good. He was out here stunning on everyone with these long flowing locks and it was beautiful. And then they cut it off and not gonna lie, I was really disappointed. <laughs> I was like, he's out here living his best life. And f- for and then and then he like gains knowledge and cuts it off. Okay, so I think maybe a part of it for me is uh, he's not a Hashira yet. He's still in training. So all of this has been his training arc for me. So I feel a little less like neglected on that point. But I'm also looking for things to love about it because I love this show. So I'll just say, if it could be interesting, why not make it interesting? So I, I, super, yeah. super quick, what's our favorite and least favorite things about Demon Slayer? Let's, let's do that and then let's hop into Mugen Train. I think that that's mm-hmm. a good way to kind of describe what we love about it, what we don't like about it. Is that fair? Yes. All right. Does anyone, anyone want to go first? I'll do it. Uh, my favorite thing about it is the, the art. The art is incredible. All the character design is incredible. Very good using like the laws of character design to make recognizable and understandable characters right from the bat. And my least favorite part is that the world is empty. There doesn't seem mm. to be any larger thing. There are these two factions, and that's it. I think, like, setting it in real-world Japan was a mistake. Because then, mm. whatever's happening here, I know that, well, uh, over in, in the West, uh, they're, uh, they've got movies playing in the theaters, and, and at some point, they're going to drop a bomb. I just wow, getting dark on <laughs> wow. the pod, but that's <laughs> yeah, fair. Sorry. That's fair. Uh, yeah, I would have to agree. I really love the art. I personally love seeing how it's brought people together in terms of like fandom, cosplay community, like people making 
you know, getting their own creative juices flowing out of this. Like, I, th- I find that absolutely fantastic. Um, mm. Pacing is probably the thing that really just is maybe one of the big reasons why I can't get into it as much as I normally hyper fixate on everything I get into. Absolutely. Um, Anna, I want to leave you for last because I, you, you have the best takes. <laughs> um, so let me, let me go real quick. Cause I will, I'll do something different here. Favorite thing. I'm going to just go with characters. Inosuke is the boar ba- bitch, right? He's the guy with the yeah. bear boar <laughs> yeah. out his head. Cool. He's like the only good <laughs> character. He's like, I mean, Nezuko is cute. Nezuko is cute, but she spends ninety percent of her time just reenacting like, like gore, like Guro comics of just like her being dismembered and strung up in all sorts of ways. But Inosuke is that strong type of single-minded anime dude that I love. And as we get to the end of, of Mugen Train, I'll kind of explain. He, he his reaction to the thing that happens at the end was the one thing that like brought tears out of me. You know, like really cool, interesting, the type of anime bullshit I like. Least favorite thing in Demon Slayer is Zenetsu, the little blonde kid. Yeah. Yep. This motherfucker. <laughs> this is like, this reminds me as a dungeon master of when I'll have a player come to my table who will make the worst fucking character I've I've seen in my life. I don't mean mechanically. Just a guy who's like, ooh, my name is Crumbus Fizzlebottom and I like insulting the other party members and being racist. I'm going to, real thing that happened, this actual guy who I'm referring to, I'm, go, as I explain, hey, in my worlds, I don't want to deal with like sexual violence and assault. That's just something that doesn't even exist. We'll d- dive into a bunch of dark topics. Let's all talk about things we don't want in the world. That's one thing I'm saying. No, not interested in talking about that. Fifteen minutes later, as you're on the the the, the ship rocking to sleep, everybody's falling asleep. Uh, what do you want to do? And Fizzle Bottom is like, I'm going to go into everybody's room and eat their asses while they sleep. And I'm like, What the fuck is wrong? What the fuck is wrong with you? And the excuse time after time is just. That's who my character is. Oh That's my just God. what the character is. And you see it all coming together now. Because then my question is, who made the fucking character? Who made the character? Mm-hmm. Because every time I see Zenetsu, who is just this like anxious, insane little goblinoid piece of shit. He's like Mineta if Mineta was on bath salts. To me, personally. He is an anxiety disorder come to life and possessing the body of a demonic little just terrible child. I hate him. And like, every time I hear someone be like, well, that's it. just how he is. That's how Zenetsu is. I'm like, why? He's not He's not like the rain and the sun. He doesn't need to fucking <laughs> suck this much. He doesn't need to be like this. It's not a law of nature. Isaac Newton didn't discover Zenetsu. <laughs> he's just fucking terrible. And I and hate like his him. concept his concept is so good as a coward who enters yes. a combat yeah. fugue state 100%. and executes on this one thing so perfectly that he can get through combat. That sounds like such a good idea, and they just shit on it every time. It's, it's like, like if Usopp was an incel, that's mm-hmm. like his vibe, is someone where it's like, I'm the weird wacky character who's really a coward, except he's just, his heart is black. No <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> That's my two cents. Anna, do you want to bring us home before we dive into Mugen Train? I was going to say that my favorite thing are the characters, the four main characters. <laughs> <laughs> say something nice about Zenitsu. I, yeah, be, a, it, be our Zenitsu apologist. He, <laughs> he gets the shit done that needs to get done eventually. That's really the best thing I can say about him. I have no reason for loving him other than my heart is so soft. <laughs> um, oh my, God. Um, my favorite thing about it is is all of these the character designs. It's the character designs, mm-hmm. the characters sort of like like backstories. That, that I think that they he did a beautiful, beautiful job with creating this world full of very distinct, very interesting characters that are fun to watch interact with one another. Not all of them are great all the time, absolutely. But um, I think that my favorite thing about them is just watching them interact with sort of the relationships that we've come to, the relationships and jokes that we get out of them. Uh, Probably least favorite is, I'm I'm going okay on this one, is pacing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Pacing really fucked over the first half of this season for me. And... uh, I almost stopped watching at episode four, I think it was, because I just got so tired of not knowing what was going on with all the time jumps and all the all the lack of filling in important details. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think pacing is going to be a big thing in our main topic today, oh. right? Oh, <laughs> <Speaking> yes, <laughs> CGI. Because today... Dun, dun, dun. 
with that said, everybody, all our brotakus out there, all our doujinshis, all of our degenerate otaku slime bag fucknuts out there, we are finally tackling Demon Slayer Mugen Train. <laughs> Hey everybody, we are back. We are talking about Mugen Train right now. This is the Brotaku's Mugen Train review uh, for everybody listening. 99% of our commentary here is going to be predicated on Mugen Train as a movie, meaning that you're going into a theater, you're paying, you know, 10, 15 bucks to see a movie, and what do you expect from a f actual film? If you're just very happy to see four episodes of Demon Slayer kind of stitched together, as some anime films are, that is totally fine. And in, in which case, ignore a lot of what we're going to say. <laughs> but we're dealing with Demon Slayer, Mugen Train, as it exists in theaters. We're going to kind of talk about the structure, talk about the, the uh, goots and the bads, but leading into it. Uh, Henry... Demon Slayer is a direct continuation, or Mugen Train is a direct continuation of season one. Can you kind of lay out what's happening as we're coming into this? Yeah. So, um, a lot of like long running shonen series that get movies, it's just like a filler movie. They do something random, they come back. But with Demon Slayer, it just picks up right where the last season left off. Tanjiro met with all the Hashina. They said, it's okay that your sister is a demon. We'll allow it. I guess we won't kill her this time. Uh, Mr. Muzin, the king of all the demons, empowered this one guy who simped the hardest, who begged and pleaded, please, Daddy Muzin, will you please, please love me? And Muzin said, yes, drink my blood. If you don't die, you'll become super powerful. That guy becomes the guy that's like the demon of the train. They are sent on a mission to meet with the flame Hashina. They, being the, the, the core protagonist crew, get sent to meet the flame Hashina on this train and solve the mystery of the Mugen train. Absolutely, Anna. Go ahead and say it. Hashira. Hashira. <laughs> <laughs> so our party's heading on the choo-choo. The, the plot of this boils down to what if Demon Slayer, but on a choo-choo train. So... <laughs> We're heading into this. The core element that needs to be understood here is, yeah, this is a standard, you know, go fucking kill the demon on the train type deal. But, um, K, the thing that people are going fucking sicko mode about for this is uh, the flame Hashira. Can you kind of give us your ode to him? Okay. Oh, my God. What like, a fucking honor. First, yes. Kimbo Supremacy. Hello. <laughs> I, I, honest to Christ, like, I was not super invested into Demon Slayer until my friend sat me down, took me to the theaters, like, watch this shit. And I was like, okay, I'll do it because I love you. And then I came out a changed person because, holy shit, was I been hard. Delicious. For this man. Oh, my goodness. He is so strong. In various aspects. When he went for the throat, okay, anyways, totally unrelated. <laughs> oh, but, <we'll> talk. <laughs> like, he's such a good starting point, I think, as well, for Tanjiro and the team in general, because he is so good, lighthearted, and also, like, super strongly powerful. Like, very, a very good jumping off point for the team to, you know, get in to see what what the big deal is with these pillars like how powerful they are and so you know someone who's maybe also a little more on their level emotionally willing to willing to take them under his wing so to speak yeah right now and, and anna can you give us a taste of what that personality is like like his vibe oh he's a himbo supreme he is he is quite <laughs> literally the dumbest sweetest strongest boy out there and he's the also vibes one of, are he's one so of the immaculate immaculate oh, brain empty no just thoughts. just perfect just all fight <laughs> all, all fight all love um and he's one of the main pillars he's the fire hashira and um so a lot of the other pillars have branched off from his uh element and so it, he was like, oh, I will take all of you under my wing. And just immediately after meeting these boys, he was like, you are my children now, babies. <laughs> like, <laughs> Absolutely. And what is his name? Because we haven't said it yet. Sengoku. No, is it? Is it Sengoku? Yes. Yep. I just think of I him remember. as I just think of him as Flame Daddy, but all right. <laughs> uh, 
also known as Flame Daddy. <laughs> yeah, so let's, I'm going to run through, we're going to kind of run through the plot, comment on things together, stop me at any point, but we're just going to kind of talk about the broad thing and maybe dive into some issues here and there. So, so uh, start of uh, Mugen Train, our four babies are on the train, they are going through it, and Nosuke has said some dope shit. He thinks that the whole train is alive, that it's the ruler of the land, because he grew up in a, a mud hut, like he's like Patrick under the rock, and so he just has complete know. no conception of society he sees shoelaces and has a heart attack he's just a very you know sweet sweet baby he's like what's the violent version of a himbo because he's not really kind oh, or sweet he's boy. missing that um it's a bakugo is the answer a bakugo <laughs> he's borkugo he is borkugo. <laughs> <laughs> and so they rush to the front of the train and um i am really going to quickly throw out here that it is completely endemic of the storytelling in this that i don't believe any of the train passengers uh, have a single line that they speak nope. even once just bodies. i think it's literally zero they might as well just be like cardboard cutouts on the there's train like which the conductor there's like the kids on the train but not really any of the passengers yeah they show up and, so, and they fall asleep <clears throat> So they run to the front of the train, and what do they hear? What do they hear our sweet himbo yelling? Delicious! Delicious! Umai! Umai! He's taking... You gotta understand fucking Japanese train culture. You fucking, like, start raising your voice and, like, like yelling on the train. You will be immediately hit with the fucking Oklahoma smash, the United States of get the fuck out of the train. Um, but... It's so sweet. So, so uh, Flame Daddy's just there. He's eating fucking bento box after bento box, and every bite he's like, "Umai, umai, delicious, yum yum, I love it." And he meets up with the babies. The babies are like, "Flame Daddy," he's like, "Hey kids," and they're like, "You're our teacher now." And he's like, "You are. You're my babies. Get into my pouch right now." Um, I don't know how his English VA sounds. I'm <laughs> just <laughs> riffing here. So, I mean, you're enough. kind of not wrong yeah you're, you're pretty I, on the I saw money. both the sub and the dub you're kind of you're not very wrong <laughs> sick so main thing to say here and henry i'm so i'm so sorry did you did you mention the thing about like the the, the pillar guy on the train and like his origin thing with musin already yes i'm not sure yes they i said that he begged really hard for the blood he got the blood could have died but he didn't he became very strong and became king of a train Sick, yeah. So Danny Musin has put all the, and like, oh, the buildup of like the the four lower pillars, like or the five lower pillars. The fact that all of them die at once, like it's an interesting moment, but it's also like the power scaling and the pacing gets really wild. So essentially, regardless, there's this guy and he's the king of a train. So who is the demon on the train? Uh, uh, who wants to take this um, about, about just like what his thing is, what his power is, what happens here? Uh, basically, what happens is uh, he decides that he is going to fight these people and kill all these people on the train by fusing his body with the train itself. And so what he does is he basically puts his spirit into the train and leaves his mortal demon body <laughs> like on top of the train to fight. I am so mad that you mentioned that this early because it is not at all clear that that's what his fucking plan is. In the show. No, <laughs> it is like not. his first plan is I'm going to put them all to sleep and invade their dreams, and that's yeah. how I'll kill them. No, because I'm 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 glad that you mentioned it, Anna, because it's it goes to show the fact because that's the most important thing that happens. They the initial you can really plan feel the episodic. <laughs> nature of the storytelling coming into play with the movie because when you watch a movie you want one story for like two hours yeah and when it's a manga it's like one story broken up into a thousand teeny tiny chunks that have like one arc and then another arc and then another arc and then another arc and then they complete Exactly. So Anna's bringing up the most important thing that happens, which isn't hinted at at all at the beginning. And so I'm glad that you bring it up because it, it, it brought, brings up a flaw of the movie. Henry, you're mentioning that there are some kids on the train and he has dream powers. What's happening here? So 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 dive into that part of the story. So one of uh, this guy's main powers is he can put people to sleep and send them into a dream of their like happiest possible future. So like Tondro gets sent back to a world where his family was never killed by the demons. Um, Inosuke gets sent to a world where he's the baddest badass and all of his friends are little critters that follow him around and they love him so much. <laughs> and uh, Zenitsu is just hanging out dating um, Nezuko because I guess that's what he wants. A man of simple desires. Yeah. 
a disgusting piece of human shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so he also has these children that he's like, uh, the, the demon has these children that he's kidnapped and he sends them into the dreams of the four main fighters to try to like find the core of their soul and kill them. So that's yes. the plan. I'm going to invade their minds and kill their souls. Yeah, so it's so, okay. I see the gears turning. You want to you, you wanna pick up from here? There's just like a lot of questions. That yeah, go. Let's talk. That, that's what we're here up. for. Like, that's what, what, like the, the idea that like they have these souls and you can go in them through the demons, but like I don't, like I as someone who hasn't read the manga, so I have no fucking clue what happens. Is that like something that they bring up later on? The, the idea of like having these souls and the importance of... No, they fucking don't. Never, ever. Okay, of course. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. cool your beans. This yeah. This is what we're doing right now. All right, okay. And then once we're done, we're done with it. The one thing that, like, I'm just really not over is the, the main little girl who... Whose dream is she in? She's in Rengoku's dream. And... Uh, ends up coming out of it and then like that one kid who's in Tanjiro's dream when they're coming out of it and you know they kind of have when they finally all wake up they have the moment of like oh well we're we can't get you in your dream now so we'll get you in real life on this train right now we're gonna fucking shank you, stab you, you or some shit kick. yeah basically yeah. um and the 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 kid who is in Tanjiro's dream and saw his soul was like, oh my god, no, you're just so pure, beautiful baby man. I can't possibly, could possibly never do no harm to you. And just with the quickness, that other lady, the kind of ringleader of them, just goes like, well, just because you're like tuberculosis doesn't mean anything. And I'm just like really not over her like saying like oh you freaking cripple like mm-hmm. i you like you never do anything and you're all so sick and all i would this never stuff, install like, a handicap ramp fuck you <laughs> oh <laughs> my god <laughs> <laughs> and i'm i i that part i'm not over i also have no clue how him having tuberculosis was relevant at all for so to is <laughs> fuck him because it's yeah, sad. Well, <laughs> Someone's got to be sad. I guess so. <laughs> to, to expand on the theme that's going on with these young kids, the idea is that uh, crazy dream uh, uh, bitch is up mouth top. Hand. Just call him mouth hand. Mouth hand. Mouth hand. Number one mouth hand boy is up <laughs> top, the demon. And th- dreams seem to be like, if this was a movie movie that followed the rules of creating a script... This would be a thing that really examine the nature of dreams. These children would be like really main characters because there's a super interesting kernel in here, which is that these are fucking sad kids. These are fucking sad, upset kids. Anna, the whole reason that they are even this this man uh, has this demon has control over them, not because he's like stolen their parents or not because he's like threatened to kill them. The reason why they want to help him so he will put them to sleep so that they can dream forever. Yeah. Great wow. hook. Great hook. You know, really fantastically developed, never talked about again after 50 nope. minutes yeah. in the film. Same with the conductor. Same with the conductor. The conductor, he punches their tickets and puts them to sleep, and he does it so that he can live in a beautiful dream. And, like, the idea of these, like, fantasy dreams are such a good opportunity to get into the core of the character and figure them out, and you get one scene per character, and then Tanjiro slits his throat a whole bunch. By the way, he slits his throat to get out of the dream. We'll talk about that in in just a second. We'll talk about that in just a second. So doing the quick dive on each of these dreams, I think I felt a little insulted because I think it kind of shows, like, the disrespect that the mangaka has for like his own characters because Tanjiro of course it's like he's back with his family but the idea that essentially the kids as as everybody is put to sleep the kids like tie a demon rope around their finger and then put it on them and then somehow they magically enter the dream and their whole thing is like the the demon above is like ooh children take this fucking ice pick and go into their brains and rip open the hole and find their soul ball and fucking kill it and then you'll dream forever and and the kids are like oh okay (coughs) chef we'll do I just want the pain to stop and so they go into the dream and Fucking, um, even though it's accurate, the, uh, who's the guy I hate, the name of the little blonde? <laughs> I, I, what? 
I hate him so much I refuse to even properly learn his name. So Zenitsu's <laughs> All right, Zenitsu, okay. <laughs> Zenitsu's whole soul realm is just like black. Like black as night. You know? And it's like a gag moment where you find out that like, oh hey, this is, is like a little fucked up, like angry incel. Like his soul is as black as his black pilled, you know, it's like conception. And um fucking uh Tanjiro's thing is just easy peasy blue skies and infinite seas it's like the horizon in the truman show just pure good and it, he even has little fucking sprites that are never explained of just like oh here come here come little boy kill us kill us <laughs> <laughs> just like, the soul of my world and like what will kill me in one hit follow me he literally yeah. says that. Oh my gosh, you took you you took me to his soul because I asked, and then starts crying because he's like, "This boy is too good." Yeah, and so there's nothing like terribly wrong with this. I just think it's kind of uninteresting. I think it's uninteresting for one person to be like, "Your soul is so pure and uncorrupted," because it kind of shows like one why it's great that Tanjiro is a role model for so many kids, but it's also kind of like that's not really representative of a guy who saw his entire family being killed as a youth and who somehow is so unimpeachably not fucked up in any way. A guy with no vice, no complication, just a pure sterling good soul. I think it's kind of... I don't is, like is that more. maybe part of his appeal, though? The idea that he has gone through so much hardship and is still so beautiful, sparkly, sunshine, soft of heart, like his trauma did not harden him? To challenge that thought? No, 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 no. And, and, and it is very interesting, but I think it leaves not really any room for character growth because his cardinal tragedy took place at the beginning of his life. Yeah. And so literally nothing that could happen. He could see every demon slayer that fights alongside him hung up on a pike and it wouldn't touch his original tragedy. And so you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that nothing can really challenge that unimpeachable blue-skied soul. Tanjiro is a very me, static character. He doesn't seem yeah. to have mm -hmm. much to grow towards. His goal, he wants to do it so that he can have done it and not yeah. really anything beyond that. Well, could you partially say that he's static because the thing that is keeping him there is Nezuko? That's his hope, that's his light, and that's the thing that is keeping him from falling into darkness is this dream of saving her. But what if more? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're. That's fine. I feel like both are fair better. points. I feel like if you wanted like something a little more compelling, if if as a, maybe if it was Demon Slayer was just one singular movie in its entirety, and maybe if the manga mm -hmm. wasn't even that like that long, and you just condensed it into that, I feel like it would be fine. But like mm -hmm. even for the length of the manga, and also for however long this anime is gonna trick go off on, yeah. you know that that's yeah. where i feel like just because you drag that staticness on for so long that's where it, it loses the appeal his motivation nope. is good yeah but it could yeah. be better here's I'll, the thing I'll, is i love how they created all these worlds for souls as much as pack said that had these like infinite ability to show the uh like the dark side of all these characters and they wasted it on shipping yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and yeah. I'm a shipper, so I care. Interesting. It it was it, a lot of re a lot of great points being made here, and I especially appreciate that, Anna, because I hadn't really considered that dimension before. But um, as just just to keep things moving on, as everybody gets pulled out of their dreams, um, let's talk the Flame Hashira's whole dreamscape because they're trying to ship all of his backstory in. Because to be clear, this is not like uh, say a hundred Nar episodes of Naruto have passed and you're learning like Kakashi's backstory. You have maybe heard the Flame Hashira speak for like five minutes before like this. You know, he's been on screen a little bit, but this is like his movie in a sense. He's the poster boy for it. What can someone who remembers better kind of explain his backstory, his whole like vibe with his family? So he, uh, his father before him was the Flame Hashira as well, and um, he goes in. He finally gets elevates to the level of Hashira and goes to his father and says, "Father, father, I've done this. Please say you're proud of me. Like, uh, please be impressed. Show me any kind of love." And his father says, "It doesn't matter. You're going to die anyway. We're all going to die. This means nothing." And he leaves brokenhearted from his family or from his father's room and sees his younger sibling who also wants to become a flame Hashira when he grows up. And he goes <laughs> and he goes, uh, oh my god, please say father was proud of you. Please say that there's something we can do to earn our father's love. 
And he just has to look this little boy in the eye and go, no, but it doesn't matter because you have my love. And that's pretty much mm. his backstory. Mm. And that murders me in cold blood because, <laughs> wow, I get all of these kids are like super excited about having Tanjiro as their role model. But in all freaking honesty, if I ever needed any type of support in my life, like he would be my go to of someone oh, I would want copy pasted in my life for sure. Yeah. yeah the absolutely. idea of like that, like brutal honesty, but still like follow your passion, do whatever you want. You're going to be fine. Like, ugh, yeah, makes and me through- tear up. To throw out the challenge here, you guys aren't going to like it. This was one of my least favorite parts of the movie, his backstory, because of how subtly um, it threw away an opportunity. Because rather than rather than show you something like like an action or an experience that he had that built him as a character and instilled these lessons to him, you know, rather than showing something that instilled with him the feeling of like, oh, well, I now realize I should defend those weaker than me. This is my service to humanity. How he learns that instead is just his mother telling that to him and how he has that relationship with his father is his father telling him that rather than any type of sort of like performative action based, like, oh, you know, a a sideways glance that could convey what his father's monologue could, you know? Yeah, which may be why this would have been better off as like a regular season and not a movie. Or an OVA. Yeah. So, they escape. They escape from the dream. Somebody mentioned this part earlier. Who's, who wants to explain the willpower no jutsu that happens when, when one kid is close to the Flame Hashira's soul ball? What happens? <laughs> oh, he just, like, while still asleep in the real world, fucking grabs her by the throat and is just holding her there for, like, five whole minutes. Just, she's like, I'm about to stab his heart. Grr! And then she's stuck there. He's just like got such strong self-preservation instincts that even when he's fully unconscious, he knows to choke a bitch. Hey, a lot of characters do a lot of things unconscious in this show, so. Mm. <laughs> That's fair. And Kay, what happens with Tanjiro? How does Tanjiro escape? <laughs> He freaking okay. The thing that is so <laughs> is so weird to me. Like his his dad comes to him and is basically like off yourself that's how that that's how you'll get out you know he he literally goes he his his father comes to him in kind of like this wispy ghost-like form and he's like you know what to do and he's like ah yes and tanjiro has this whole monologue of like take of like yes i know what to do and like takes his sword up to his neck and just like and that's how he gets out of his dream Mm -hmm. which is i I don't know why that's so freaking mind-boggling to me maybe it's like this weird like undertone overtone of like self-sacrifice that is really common in a lot of shonen and like having to make the ultimate sacrifice is Mm -hmm. it's it's very very charged imagery i mean could you imagine having to off yourself over and over again in not even an easy way in a very yes and and he has and he has an offing himself montage in the movie (laughs) literally a (laughs) montage of him murdering (laughs) his they do and like it would be it would be so so very different if maybe he like had to you know like regular samurai kind of like stab himself in the gut as is kind of traditional no like he's full-on beheading himself mm-hmm. like absolutely bay bay beyblade letting it rip on him <laughs> and I'm just like <laughs> i was sitting there just thinking throughout the whole movie like at various different parts just like wow this is a lot this this is a lot is this not and it's a very lot? it's very intense mm-hmm. it's very edgy and i'm grateful that when they finally have the fight with the uh with with uh dream demon that at a certain point he 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 keeps flashing him with like the go to sleep go to sleep go to sleep and each time it's like <laughs> when he kills himself in his dream um but there's one point where he's fighting the dream demon and Inosuke is like whoa, 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 whoa you're not asleep dick. <laughs> where where he fakes doing the like kill yourself no jutsu and uh, Tanjiro is about to off himself but then he doesn't and it's a lot to deal with. So Pretty fucking flame daddy. Yeah. So flame daddy is choking the fucking girl. Tanjiro wakes up, smacks all the Jappies. Everybody wakes up. Um, him and fucking Inosuke hop up to the roof. It's a little weird because I feel like um, 
the the flame Hashira lets them do most of the heavy lifting because he's like, I'm going to fucking defend five cards by myself and that's fine. But so they go up, they fucking X going to give it to you, the, uh, the, the dream demon. Really fun co- uh, content here, fun slicing and dicing. Am I missing anything or is this like good to continue with this? I mean, like, I have a nitpick I'd like to yell about. Oh, pick, don't pick, mind. pick the nit. Um, so there's this moment in Tanjiro's dream. It's very impactful. He's like one of the last moments before he decides to kill himself. He's running through the snow and Nezuko shows up and she's just normal. And she says, Tanjiro, where are you going? And it would be this incredibly impactful moment of finally hearing Nezuko speak because like she walks around with a bamboo in her mouth, not making any noise, can't talk ever. It would be this incredible moment if you hadn't already heard her talk in Zenitsu's dream. Mm. Like five oh, minutes before. Yeah. What a wasted opportunity. Very I mean, fair. she does talk. She does technically talk in the first season as well. But it would have been a moment. <laughs> it would have been a good moment and they squandered the potential. Anyway, back to the plot. As, as we're talking about like the, you know, they're finally like getting to the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lightning McQueen, his name, Zenitsu. Oh, Zenitsu. 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 I'll, I'll be there for you guys. This is my one job. It's just to remember. So that. sorry. <laughs> um, his whole deal is he's cowardly, but as he's passed out and sleeping, he can do amazing feats. Why did he not have more of a bit? Because like he was asleep all the whole time. Doesn't because like he character. was asleep the whole time. Like, doesn't that make sense? Like, uh, not that I love like I I love Anosuke. Like, I really like I vibe with that boar kid. Like, full feral, a hundred percent. Um, but like, and they have a moment as they're fighting the big bad where he doesn't know where to take his sleepy no jutsu because Anosuke's boar mask obscures his eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. obscures his vision so he doesn't know that wouldn't even be a problem for Zenitsu because he's he's already sleeping and he could he could do all of this and like not even like Tanjiro needs to maybe he should sit this one out and get the other guy to do it and maybe Tanjiro like help his sister and help Rengoku and whatever and like let the other two do it who will not have to kill themselves over and over again very fair very fair so at this point, I must introduce you all to the moment I started hating this movie. Oh, totally. <laughs> um, just because, to be honest, this is something where I, if this was just four episodes of Demon Slayer I was watching on my couch, I would hold it to such a lower standard. And, and so know that this is all criticism about like this having to work as a film. Um, but the, the dream demon, the dream, the dreamin. Uh, he is, he's, he tells these kids to go out and there's the common anime trope of explaining your own powers and like what they do to your opponent. The Dreamin is on top of the train. He, during this entire time, is monologuing to himself, going, oh, my power of the dream! In, in, inside your dream, you must be forced to kill yourself as you recollect all of the strangest things of your subconscious, and the only way that they will die is if the children finally find a way to stab the soul ball! He's on top of this, saying it to himself, to nobody else! He's just speaking to himself, explaining his own powers to himself, on top of a train moving 70 miles an hour, so he can't even <laughs> hear himself! <laughs> you can't even fucking hear yourself on top of a train and he's screaming about his own power to fucking nobody Tanjiro goes and destroys the demon never fucking before in Demon Slayer has there even been a hint that you can fucking do this that any fucking demon has even the fucking capacity to do this as Tanjiro slices his fucking head off the dream demon goes Ooh, you didn't think that was my real body did you? Psych! She and fucking says well actually during during that whole time that you thought I was just up here fucking talking to myself I was secretly merging my body with the fucking train I was merging my body with the fucking train that is not a thing established in the demon slayer universe that fucking exists Never before can a demon just be like I'm a fucking train now <laughs> what would that even mean what would that even mean to take over a train as if it's like one thing rather than a million interconnected bits? And he just goes like fucking like flippity dippity. I'm the train. Means, 
It means that now the train is covered in purple growth. That looks fucking terrible. That looks fucking terrible. So many people have talked about how great the animation is in this movie, but suddenly the train gets covered in purple testicular lumps and tentacles everywhere. It looks like it fucking sucks. This thing, you're going to tell me that this movie outsells Spirited Away, one of the most seminal works of fucking human achievement, and you're going to get away with this fucking like $40 ass blender style just (laughs) shit out onto the train, just ball sack looking purple tumor <laughs> shit i'm i'm so incensed it's <laughs> definitely one of the moments where i was like holy shit this is uh, a lot and not all the money go yeah, i was i was literally like this this way. this series is literally known for its like aesthetic appeal how did they let this slide how did they let that fucking slide that far i have no idea mm-hmm. and <sighs> at, oh god so They have slain him, striking him down, and he's the train now. And it's just what this says to me is, if you care about being interested in, like, what how powers work in this world, fuck you. Eddie Demon could just decide to be a train. If this was tangentially, even fucking seven degrees of Kevin Bacon connected to the dream power, I would be like, oh, interesting. Like, if he was always just like... Oh, well, say I am the I am the demon of spores and I am going to place this pulsating spore on the back of your neck and it is going to steadily start taking over your brain and consciousness that I could be like, yeah, maybe he could become a train, but he's a dream guy. Like, it's (laughs) like the one was the train dreaming. What the fuck are you going to try to say to me to explain this? I'm really fucking mad that you two things bring this up because like I like you know what? It didn't even cross my mind. Like, I was just so far gone into just radical acceptance <laughs> at that point. Where I was just like, yeah, I mean, like, if anything else happens, like, I guess this shit might as well just be a thing. Uh, and then they start, like, it. using their swords to dig into the train to try to find the spine of the train. Because he I, grew cause... a spine in the train. <laughs> like, Is that he how grew a neck. Work? It's his body now. I don't know. I'm trying to find some excuse. I'm trying <laughs> like to trying to like that like would also take like how stuck. long were they doing that for though? Because like this happens in a night. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. it's not over yeah. like days and stuff. So like he just like uh, manifested that and on top of he's manifesting himself as this train. He's also on top of that, controlling all of these other people Four while simultaneously yeah, trying yeah. to give them different, like, dream, personalized, personalized dream things. Lord knows how the fuck he knows that. Um, magic. What? Just magic. Um, yeah. Just do a magic. Just, and human power is they can do a magic. That is and the for biggest anyone li- usage of YOLO, fuck it, I've mm-hmm. ever <laughs> seen. And for anyone listening being like, but Pax, this is anime. In anime, anything can happen. You old boomer bitch. Shut the fuck up. Pull your head out of your ass, man. It's anime. It's magic. Like, if this was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I would fucking agree with you because that's within the established bonds of their universe. But you've never even seen a demon take over another fucking person before, let alone a train. (laughs) Sorry, Anna. Did I miss something? Did that happen? I think we might have because I There was like the drum demon... Move. Yeah, I keep stealing these things. Oh my god! The house, the <laughs> house. He moves the house. Yeah, and there's the one with the balls who throws them, and they're part of her body as well. There, there are other demons in this in this world that have actually formed themselves with living or with uh, non living structures. Yes, the ham boning yeah. demon <laughs> patting his drums. Yes, there. You Did know. You just say- Oh, God. Well, you know, Anna, actually, thank you so much for bringing that up, because I think that just kind of owned me with facts and logic. I totally (laughs) forgot about that. I totally forgot about that. Um, I I was going to bring it up earlier, but everyone was very excited. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you very much for bringing us back down to Earth, because although I wish that we had seen perhaps a demon like take over a microwave as foreshadowing that this was possible, you're totally right that someone did kind of become a ball and, and, and a house. So this is within the bounds of the universe. I retract my statement. Mugen train, totally rash. <laughs> so anyway, they it. kill the train. But 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 the other thing too, though, that I'll, <laughs> Pax, I'll give you on this is that like, but those demons were like that was the basis of their thing. That was was their thing. Was that was their thing? Is that <laughs> God, they, it's, 
If he was just train guy and his arms were fucking trains and that was how you met him. <laughs> and he was just like, hey, choo choo, bitch. Bog, bog. I'm, yeah, I'm now train bow. In... Suck my dick. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm the conductor. <laughs> and now we're in like Power Rangers Turbo or something. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. 100%. Fuck. So I just want to speed run this because, and I made a great point there. They fucking find the train's neck and it's a cool fight. It's a cool fight. They find the train's neck. They take away the spine of the train. Um, and at this point, this is the point in the movie where everyone checks their phones. And they go, holy fuck. They just had the most amazing like final climactic fight. Why, why is there fucking 35 minutes left? What the fuck is what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. And what happens is, uh, Anna, do you want to take this? Oh, we're not done yet, friends. We're not There's done more. yet. Um, so then what happens is the train is defeated and, and we're all, all is good with the world. And then suddenly another... Fucking nowhere. Another <laughs> demon just appears and is like, hey, by the way, I'm stronger. <laughs> oh. And so we end up having this enormous like end of the movie fight that comes out of nowhere that really doesn't have any sort of like plot purposes other than hey guys there are more demons there are more demons for you to see and um, so when Goku fights um, when Goku fights this uh, I think it's the third highest demon or something like I didn't check his he's eyes. a very that's, strong that's exactly right uh, and Akaza upper three yeah yes and um details <laughs> and um so out of nowhere he's like you need to become a demon this is my my one mission in life is to get a her uh her 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 Hashira? Hashira. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> we infected you with saying Hashira wrong. <laughs> uh, we got, we, I, I want to get a Hashira to become a demon and, and join us in the demon ranks. And that comes out of left field. And then, uh, am I allowed to say it? Yeah, man. He just this straight is up murders working. him. Mm. He just straight up murders him. No more Goodbye, Rengoku. himbo. Honest to Christ, the worst mistreatment of a himbo I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. Just I don't the, know. I the, watched the, Devil Man Cry, baby. Oh, okay. Wait. That, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you got me on that one. You got me on that one. But like the the potential behind this beautiful himbo man, and also the potential he could have for the growth. Of our other characters who, like, to be quite fair, like, uh, Tanjiro's one thing, but the other two are very lackluster, at least Mm -hmm. to me personally. Like, they don't have a whole lot of growth. And then he just, he's just out of the game? Forever? Oh my god. And then Tanjiro is just like... And then Tanjiro's like, because before... Rengoku's like, focus your breath and your energy because Tanjiro gets stabbed. And he's like, you can, like, close your wound and you'll be able to feel it. Like, this is a higher level power that you can get to while breathing. And that's what he teaches him. And fucking, like, (laughs) Rengoku's full-fisted through the gut. And Tanjiro's like, well, you can just fix that, right? Like, you can (laughs) breathe it better, right? Just fucking breathe good, bro. That's all it takes. Goku's just like, um, yeah, maybe not this time. Like, I'll stay alive for, like, one more minute to give you a, like, a plot set up for what might happen in the upcoming season. Then, I'm done, boy. Yeah, like, it's, like, the arm is still all holding him in. It's starting to be daybreak, right? And then when that finally happens, you know, the arm dissolves in the, in his body, and then he just bleeds out and then they all have their own monologues or like they're the, all of the big crying Everybody moments while his dead body is still there and <laughs> it was a lot it was yeah. a lot it was a lot and that's the end of Mugen Train baby that is the end of Mugen Train and Anna a couple of clarifying questions there because even though we're all currently calling up Himbo Protective Services to the Magica's house to be like <laughs> Uh, hello, uh, uh, safety check. We're trying to do a quality of life check on your himbo. Uh, your himbo is alive still, right? And the monkey's like, what, 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 what? Um, that fucking guy, Akaza, that's gotta be a pretty big moment, killing, like, a new fan favorite character. We've met Akaza before this movie, right? Um, we have seen Akaza before. We've seen a silhouette. We have not met him. Oh, a silhouette. So this isn't a fully established character that just comes... 
he is straight out of left field. We have never met, met, truly met this man before. Oh, but but they explain why and how he was following the train to that exact point, right? No. <laughs> oh, okay, but he he's at least met the flame hashra before and like it's a culmination of some epic rivalry right it's not like first time the flame hashra has like even seen one of these guys right big old zip there friend (laughs) so at this point we are just kind of fucking ballooning out here we are expanding Mm -hmm. out to talk about some of our broader things (laughs) you can train because um that fight looked pretty fucking cool, right? Oh, yeah. It was awesome sure. to watch. Good, very fluid animation, good motion. They used their, like, uh, CGI technology of, like, uh, parallax backgrounds to have a lot of motion and a lot yeah. of cool stuff happening. Uh, but uh, but what does it mean? Does it mean anything? It doesn't mean anything is the problem. That's the problem e- I have. Exactly. So let's... um. I actually Let's have talk a parallel about some... I want to draw to this. Like, yeah, go. Ren Goku's death really reminded me of the death of a major character in Naruto. I forget the character's name, but it's the guy with the like knife fist blades who is the teacher of Shikamaru's team. There's Asuma. a moment where he is fighting one of the head guys of Akatsuki and he dies. And it's a very emotional moment, but it's also very effective storytelling because... This is a character that we know, that we have an attachment to, that we've seen for, like, seasons upon seasons upon seasons. And when he dies, it, like, shows just how powerful this character is. That character had a very complicated power, so we get to see the illustration of that. So when he comes back later, it means something. And, like, the the guy that died, he had a wife. He had relationships. He had a mm. history. So you feel something when he's gone. And Rengoku, we met... Once before the movie, learned one detail about his past, and then he gets killed by a guy we've never met before, and not because the guy had some sort of special, interesting technique. He was just very strong. As Henry would say. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, for a little, little video little podcast off. listeners, uh, that was a jerking off motion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god, gosh. So, um, this still is a box office breaking well-loved movie, and some people are going bananas for it. Um, gosh, can we brief, just just to introduce some little light, what were our positive things? Like the highlights of the movie where we go, hey, this there was something good here. There's some good, good, good. Honestly, um, I think a big part of its success and a big part of the reason that I went back and saw it a few times was it was just nice to see these characters again. It was just nice mm, to get point. to be in this world again. It was nice to get to see these characters. It's we haven't had it in a year and a year. Something like that. Something like least. that. And um it was just wonderful to be reimmersed back into that world that a, a lot of people really, really loved. And I think that's a mm-hmm. big reason for its success. Not necessarily the fact that it was a good movie, but it was because it was nostalgic in a way. And it was it was a sign of more to come. If you love Demon Slayer, it's more Demon Slayer. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Kay, big highlights from this? It's Rengoku. I, <laughs> I am a, I, y'all, I'm a simple bitch. Okay? <laughs> you, you give me that. Also, like, the animation for all of his stuff was just really beautiful. Like, definitely the highlights. Uh, they, they definitely highlighted him as a character. And also... You know, when he's fighting, the palette changes where everything else is dark around him, but he is, like, the light. And I, they really, I really sell. Nice. They really sell how powerful he is. Yeah, that is they, very clear. It sets yeah, the bar. They, they sell how powerful he is. Uh, they do not, like, I cannot overstate understate like how much like how much i love just him specifically now Mm -hmm. just for this movie like literally i can throw everything out everything else out but Mm -hmm. just like give me all of his parts i i'm happy with that yeah anything else you want to complain about the weakest parts of the movie (laughs) the the endemic issues dig in dig in you are our brilliant gorgeous animation queen anna dig into that for me oh my god how where did the money go what happened as well as Mm -hmm. the fact that you can't say hey the big thing about us is how like artistically beautifully we are rendered and then dump a pile of shit on it 
just have like a rubber ass texture over the whole thing. It was it was jarring. It was visually unappealing, and it was so much of the movie. Mm. Mm. That's that's what I've got to say. I the, the the second the CGI emerged, I was in a, a very quiet movie theater, and I went ah! just immediately. <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we know they're capable of better, which is the thing. They've like when done everyone better. is talking and I almost feel a little gaslit when people talk about like how great Demon Slayer's animation is. It's like it's so great, it's so great. And it's like it's it's a fucking hell of a lot better than like Naruto One Piece, DBZ, like the things from like the early aughts. But you have competition now. You have fucking Space Dandy and Kill the Kill and all the shit from Studio Trigger. You mm-hmm. have Gurren Lagan. You have uh, the uh, Your Name and Weathering with You and these things that are trying really crazy, gorgeous, new experimental things. It's not like people act like Demon Slayer invented having like animation that doesn't make you want to have a brain aneurysm. Yeah. You know? Like the one thing that yeah. Ufotable does better than just about anybody is those like virtual camera motions the way that like the camera will spin around the characters and the background will stay in place it looks correct that's very impressive but the actual like 2d animation is good but it's just as good as just about everything else that has good animation yeah yeah absolutely absolutely people oftentimes with demon slayer get style mixed up with actual like, Ooh. like, like art technical quality. quality. Yeah. It's just because Demon Slayer looked so different from anything that came out around it that it really excited people. So they were like, oh, that's good art versus I like that style. Nice, Anna. That is a big brain point. That is a big brain point. Okay, any big takeaways from this? I'm really missing the himbo. I'm I'm sad. Like, I, I know I, I, like, I, know I will get... You. I will get to... <laughs> seeing the rest of it and knowing the story eventually because you know like sunk cost fallacy we finish what we started but like yeah. i'm gonna be lamenting him this whole time there's a hole in your heart there's a hole, and in, a heart. hole in my freaking gut like we'll we'll be <laughs> yeah. twinsies yeah for sure i'm so glad that you're our grounding force of just the fact that like at the end of the day this does boil down to like our big dumb hot himbo that we want to stand who was taken from us too young yeah you know yeah like i had no problem seeing the movie again knowing that i was gonna get to see his stupid mug like Mm -hmm. yeah yeah give me the himbo that's fine absolutely so at the at the end of the day like everybody has mentioned pacing separately is an issue with this and it's why I feel so goddamn conflicted about this movie in that, like, I kind of feel like a a, a crock, crockety old bitch. Wait, crotchety? Wait, crotchety. what is it? Crotchety. There's a T in yeah. there. Well, crotchety, I, I, I know I said crockety, but, like, crotchety sounds a little perverted. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, where I you draw feeling... the line? <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. I was feeling very crotchety at this movie. <laughs> um, but, uh... Because because it does have some hype fight scenes that if I was just watching Demon Slayer the anime or the 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 series I'd be like fuck yeah this is cool but um but I wasn't I was in a movie theater and I didn't pay money for the ticket because I have the unlimited movie pass at Regal Theaters but if I did <laughs> if I was paying um I feel like all of my anger at this just stems from the fact that like I want it to be something that it's not and so maybe my whole critique just kind of falls apart on itself. Because, like, I've been fucking paid to write and to correct screenplays. This is something that I can actually speak on. And the normal structure of a movie, even the old, the, the last My Hero movie did it, um, One Piece movies are always like this, where, like, all of the characters go to a strange, new, interesting world with immaculate world building. They all get paired up into individual battles or or team battles that let them show off all their cool things. Everything is written like fucking adventures where it's like just beautiful highlights and little quips with everybody. And there's a main uh, uh, enemy that has a story and it's resolved and it's gorgeous and it's really interesting. But this is just something where the fact that there's this jarring turn in the last like 35 minutes of the movie where it's like this is clearly just another episode and a half of Demon Slayer that has nothing to do with the previous bits. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that like the kids, which I was just like, fuck, that's so interesting. The sick tuberculosis kid. So cool. I want to learn more. Thrown out the fucking train car window. I mean, not literally. That would have been cool. But <laughs> but just not resolved. I don't know, Henry. I, I see thoughts I in, thought. in your brain. How would we feel about the movie? If it ended with the killing of the train demon, and then the second season started with fighting the big bad, 
and Rengoku's death. I would feel that... like that would be more acceptable because yeah. the mm. train is just one story. Mm-hmm. And then when you kind of get the new demon from left field, like you really kind of like, what the fuck? And then he dies and then you're like, you Imagine. like the movie could leave you with hope. The movie could leave you with hope, and then mm. it would be more of a fucking sucker punch to your everything. Um, when they come back and season two opens up, and they're like, "Yeah, by the way, this bit did." Just imagine mm. the sea of tweets that would come from starting your season with the death of this now beloved character. Yes, that would have gotten. Yeah. Where's their social media manager? I need to get them into like the screenwriting. <laughs> Yeah. Into the room, Anna. And I saw a lot going on on, on in in your skull. I what, was what's, just what's thinking. So if if we were to do that, would we use those extra thirty five minutes that were at the end of the film to uh, then flesh out other parts of the movie as well? To go deeper into the backstory of the children, to go deeper into the backstory of this demon, to figure to to maybe take away some of the jokes that were there simply for jokes and include like thematic content. Hell yeah. You yeah. could have, like, turned that train into a feast instead of Ooh. just, like, a thing that happens. Also, they didn't play the song one time. They didn't play the song for the end credits. How fucking yes. dare they? <laughs> very true. And very it feels true. very whole- strongly about the OP. We play it in this household at uh, three times a week at least. Something like that. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. And so maybe there is this alternate universe in which, and maybe we'll get our Demon Slayer reboot 30 years from now that'll do this, where we get that thing where the role of the children are expanded in ways that it's not even in the manga, but that's okay because they realize, hey, this is a movie and needs to function as one. Maybe the guy on top of the train, as we've seen like other like generals of the, you know, the, the pillars of uh, Michael Jackson, Mazu, Bazu, Tazu, Bazu, <laughs> the other demon generals. Um they all have underlings that are very fucking strong and posed a huge threat to other people. What if suddenly, oh, of course, I am the Lord of Dreams. I have three members of my cabal that can physically enter the dreams of people. And so, oh my God, the kids are being frozen. They're not able to stab these things. I'm sending my fucking people into the dreams so they could have this open dreamscape battle where even in their dreams, they must psychically defeat them. And and, and that way, everybody gets a chance to shine. Nobody's getting shortchanged. So I guess for my anime movies, I like to have the idea of maybe I could bring a friend who could have some fun at this but like i don't know what i would rate this at How, can we give this a rating out of 10 would we feel comfortable committing to something like that that people can follow us on the internet for forever five out of ten. Six. Oh, but like does it even like count as a movie in my eyes <laughs> <laughs> okay, super what, duper fair what rating would you give each of the four episodes that this movie actually is each of each of each of the four episodes, uh, all of the train stuff, we'll give we'll give it a solid five. The last thirty minutes, because they hit so hard, and that's where they put a lot of good money. good money money shots in there. Dumb, dumb, uh, yeah, <laughs> give, give it give it at least an eight, just for the last thirty mm. minutes. Uh, specify yeah, no. last thirty minutes. I'm That's also very I'm biased. I'm himbo biased. So like you can't take anything I say seriously. Super fair. Super fair. Um, I, I think that this movie for me, I got to take my like, was it more enjoyable than not? I think. Yeah. So I would I would probably have to give it like a six. Um, but I just got so I think triggered that it was toppling spirited away over. And I was like, it's not worthy. Oh, God, you're a pretender. You're not like the old king. Um, and so I got to catch that on my inside. At the same time, um, a lot of anime films that I've seen, even if they're based on a previous property, you could bring a friend to who hasn't seen the thing and they'd be like, oh, that's cool. And maybe it wouldn't be totally canon. I feel like if you have not seen Demon Slayer before, this might be like a fucking two to you with how unco- oh, incomprehensible yeah. it is. It's like that scene I, at like, the end where they see all the other uh, Hashina reacting to the news that Rengoku has died and everybody is like so sad and I'm sure half the audience is like, Who's that? Made Wait, me feel uh, that? real Patrick coming back to his home in SpongeBob being like, Who are you people? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like oh, God. <laughs> Because I'm a very I'm a very, very base casual fan. And a lot was lost on me for this. Fair enough, fair uh, enough. God. I, th- I think that Patrick- dude with the two swords. 
Who's that guy? I don't know. Who's some guy? That's big. Ba- that's the one that's crying all the time? Sure. The, wait, the, the one with three one. wives? Okay. There's one with three wives? There's I'm bringing this wives. back. I don't wait. know. We're going to find out. You got to watch season two to get into the Mormon demon slayer <laughs> and to get into the one whose just entire head is just a sore fucking chafed, like... Ugh, who's that guy um, with all the scars in like the beginning the of the end who's leader, that guy leader of the, oh, the le- that's, a, that's a thing that's a real thing okay yeah I he's the leader really but they him. never did they call they, like they call him master but like did they ever like state in movie that he is the leader of oh, no. all of no, them of course no, not no, that would no, 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 no. make too much sense uh, okay. <laughs> God. as far as oh the movie God. is concerned he's some guy and the fact that Flame Hashira never even went like, oh, yes, I've heard of you, the third, you know, Lord of the Demon things, the one who's known as the Terror of a Thousand. He's just like, I've never like, even you? seen you before. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> and he's like, fuck you, uh, fight me. Fuck you, fight me. And I'm never going to explain who I am, why I'm here, how I was following the train, how I knew it would be here, how I know that you would be here or what. But I, I think that a good little thing to leave us off with is like, you mentioned to us before the show the remarkable nature of the Demon Slayer fan community and like fan creations and things. So can you kind of give us just like a little ode as to like what does make this property special and like why good does come out of this? Oh, just the absolute beauty of how creative people get and how much work and heart that they put into their craft all based around demon slayer i i personally find it amazing and it's really great too because you can you can go to japan and not know like a language you know demon slayer and you can point it out and you you vibe on that level because you both know the story and like yeah how beautifully transcendent is that absolutely gorgeous yeah Absolutely, absolutely. And I know you're big on the shipping and the the art style. Anything you wanted to throw in here? Um, is it is it worth going to see? I think so. Even if you're just going to see it like at home, like maybe like wait till you wait till it comes to like I don't know Netflix or something. Yeah, probably. But <laughs> I I think it's it's worth it, even if not just to watch it as a continuation, so you know what's happening next season. Like. Support an anime movie. Just do it. Support an anime movie. I think that that is a good thing to end it on. And Henry, I'd ask your opinion, but you gave it at the top of the show. Yeah. <laughs> In conclusion, Mugen Train is a land of contrasts. <laughs> you'll learn a lot. If you're a student, you'll learn a lot from watching it. You'll have a lot of opinions. Uh, and you'll see some... God, there wasn't even a good Nezuko moment in this. Anyway... Nope. With with that said, a lot of gorgeous stuff coming out here. Can't wait to see the fan art that this is going to inspire, the cosplays, the TikToks, the May Mays on the Mugen Train, the Thomas the Tank Engine crossovers. <laughs> it's really going to be lit. And those, at least, will bring a ton of joy, and it wouldn't have existed if not for the remarkable, groundbreaking, historic movie that is Demon Slayer Mugen Train. And so uh, with that said... Kay, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's been such a pleasure. I've wanted to have you on for so long, and it's just so great to have you. I mean, you're so brilliant. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. This is like dreams coming true right now. Absolutely. Oh man, uh, and 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 you're very much welcome back again for maybe a Devil Man Cry Baby. I've been wanting to do that forever, forever. Hen- Henry, any unpopular opinions about Devil Man Cry Baby? No, I have the good. popular it's ma- opinion. It's so good. Yes, thank it's you. A- <laughs> It's a masterpiece. It's a yeah. masterpiece. And uh, hopefully everyone will be enjoying Mugen Train. If you haven't seen it now, enjoy it when it's for free on Crunchyroll a year from now. And it'll feel more natural then. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we love you all so much for listening. Thank you all so much. This has been a great episode. Uh, I am Pax. This is Brotakus. Anna, Henry, and Kay in the trap today. This has been our long-awaited Demon Slayer takedown. So thank you all so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye, Bye. Bye.